feet away. So we tried to pull the hatch open down underneath the instrument panel, and it wouldn't come open. Neil, this is Houston. What's your status on hatch opening work? Houston, what's your status? Push out. Get some light. Get that lock, yep. Come on. Okay, it's a tug on that thing. Aldrin eventually bent back the flimsy door to equalize the pressure. With the hatch open, the moon was within their grasp. Now the hatch is coming open. Now as Neil Armstrong finally prepared to set foot on the moon, the whole world anxiously waited for his first words. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And I think it's a beautiful quote. It's very symbolic and very, very well done. Those words were great. They represent the first movement of mankind off our planet. Okay, ready for me to come out? Off After 15 minutes, Aldrin left the module to join Armstrong on the surface. Both hands down, the rest of the point long up. There you go. Now, for the first time, astronauts could experience the reality of being on the moon. Standing under lunar gravity with, with the very uh, soft, uh, maybe inch or so of lunar dust. There's not much of a feeling that's translated at all uh, from uh, stepping on different uh, portions of the surface. It's, it's quite smooth, and it's easy to push off with your feet and just put a foot out there. You can look out at the horizon and, uh, and see very clearly, because of no atmosphere, haze, or anything, uh, you can see objects. Uh, very, very clearly. Beautiful view. Is that something? The best way to describe what we were looking at was just utter desolation with no signs of life whatsoever. The biggest thing about the moonwalk, scientifically, was get a sample of the moon. There were two rock boxes made out of aluminum. They were supposed to be filled with samples of dust and rock and brought back to Earth and then see what that might tell us about the history of the moon. Aside from that, there was a seismometer to detect moonquakes and see if the moon had any geologic activity. But while Armstrong painstakingly performed these scientific tasks, to millions of viewers, Aldrin appeared to be skipping aimlessly around the moon. The truth behind this bizarre behavior can now be revealed. Buzz decided to experiment with locomotion on the moon. And this was actually something that he had planned that was a, a specified objective uh, before the flight. They had plenty of footage of us walking slowly, but then I wanted to try and move in sort of a kangaroo hop, making a turn, and sort of like the lead that a horse has in turning and it, with his front feet is sort of a, a one, two, a one, two, one, two. And that does give you naturally the best control on the surface of the moon. As Aldrin galloped around, he was interrupted by the longest distance phone call in history. It came from President Nixon in the White House. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Global Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. Nixon had been quick to cash in on the massive global interest in the moon landing. But behind the scenes, he was concerned. What were the chances of the crew ever leaving the moon alive? Of all the dangers, the next stage of their mission was the most risky of all. Again, the lunar module was at the heart of the problem. The 
serious concerns in the design of the lunar module was that you only had one engine that had to fire to get off the surface of the moon. In earlier test flights, the engine had given grave cause for concern. The ascent engine failed on the six times it was tested in space, on at least three of those occasions to some degree or other. So there was a 50-50 chance that that engine would work exactly as planned. If for some reason the ascent engine didn't work, there was no way to rescue the crew, and basically the crew was lost. Nixon became so concerned about the astronauts becoming stranded that his aides prepared a memorial speech to be broadcast worldwide. This classified document remained buried in government archives for over 30 years. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. But they also know that there Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, however, would never have given up hope. Rather than worry about things like that, we'd face them when the time came. Well, we'd work as hard as we could to fix the problem uh, until the oxygen ran out and we just uh, uh, fell asleep. Negative. Head on up the ladder, Buzz. With possible engine failure weighing on their minds, the astronauts returned to the module from their two-hour moonwalk, only to make a shocking discovery. In looking around at some of the lunar dust on the floor, I discovered something that really didn't belong there, the broken end of a uh, circuit breaker. In the cramped conditions of the module, their bulky spacesuits had snapped off the very circuit breaker essential for starting up the engine. Houston, uh, Tranquility, uh, do you have a way of showing the configuration of the engine arm circuit breaker? Uh, because the end of it uh, appears to be broken off. Mission Control were powerless to help. If the engine could not be started by some workaround means, there would be no rescue available. It was up to the astronauts to improvise a solution using only items they had with them on board. To this day, Aldrin treasures the everyday object that saved their lives. These are uh, my memorabilia that represents our solution to, to a somewhat critical problem. In the uh, countdown procedure, I used a pen, uh, one of several that we, we had on board that, that didn't have uh, metal on the end, and we used that to push.